Hello and welcome to episode four of the Behind the Medal podcast with me, Dean Smith. And me, Gary Damer. What you got to say, Gary? Oh, the usual begging, the whole kinds of that. Uh, give us a like, subscribe, give us a nice review. Um, follow us on Twitter at Behind the Medal. Absolutely. And before we start, we just have this very quick, very loud message. Warning! Warning! This episode contains swearing. So... If you don't like words any stronger than Spanner or Ragamuffin, then maybe this podcast isn't for you. Okay, let's begin. Ding. Gary. <laughs> Gary and Dean, Gary and Dean, chatting along in a new podcast. Gary and Dean, Gary and Dean, and Gary's got hair. Run around and see the world Try our flung tails, Dean's hair is curled We talk some shit and play some games For legal reasons, some names are changed Oh, sorry Gary and Dean, Gary and Dean Chatting along on a new podcast Gary and Dean, Gary and Dean You won't get this time back Okay, so we have a slightly different episode for you this time. Um, for the first time on Behind the Medal, we have a guest. Don't yeah, we, Gary. Yeah, we did. We went down to uh, to Burnley um, to go and visit Scott Cunliffe. Now, for those who don't know who Scott Cunliffe is, you're going to learn about him across this podcast. But a very brief history of Scott uh, is that uh, me and Gary stumbled across him on social media because he was doing um, running uh, 3,000 miles across uh, this football season from Burnley's home ground turf moor to all of the uh, the club's away games this season. And we thought, we've got to go meet this weirdo yeah. and see what has driven him to do this. Yeah. And what a fabulous man like proper life affirming bit of time we spent with the oh, guy it was fabulous it was absolutely fabulous um so without further ado we're going to dive straight into the chat um you may hear some um some background noise some music some people chatting because we did go to meet him at his gym uh, just outside burnley so there is a bit of that going on but don't let it take away from the stuff that he's got to say um and we as we got there he just come out of how do you pronounce it gary i kept getting this wrong yeah i think it's cryotherapy cryotherapy yeah in any case here we go <laughs> What is chirotherapy? Cryotherapy. I don't uh, say it. Yeah, teach him how to say it first of all. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm struggling. Is it on? Is it written down here anyway? <laughs> cryotherapy. Yeah. It's a recovery process. Just very cold water gets your c- circulation going. I think your soft tissue. So you'll have a bit of soft t- tissue damage that will repair those. Um, but also has a bit of a, a memory. Uh, sorry, a, a brain sort of boost as well. Really? Yeah, yeah, so I feel wide awake, you know, sort of after going, it's the second or third time I've been in there now. Right. And it's like, I might yeah. have to dive in there myself, yeah, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've just yeah. had an half an hour car journey with Dean, I can do with <laughs> <laughs> some livening up. Yeah. So th- is There's it not much else going on in Birmingham <laughs> before <laughs> the afternoon. Anyway. A little brief history of my knowledge of Scott. I was watching the uh, BBC Sports Personality of the Year, uh, which was just before Christmas, I think. Correct, yeah. Um, and I was sort of half listening, I was, t- I was chatting, and then I heard Claire Balding say, here's Scott Cunliffe, he's running from Burnley to every Burnley away game in the Premier League this season, total of around about 3,000 miles, and then she sort of moved on very quickly. And because I'd only half heard it, I thought, nah, that's not true. That can't be a thing that's happening in, 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 the, in the world. And then a couple of weeks later, both me and Gary text each other at exactly the same time because we'd seen your story on BBC Sport. Yeah, they, t- they stuck a tweet out and it, there was like a condensed video. Was that their video? Was that your that you posted? I just had my uh, phone and shot videos as I went uh, went along day by day on the on the run to Brighton, and then they they put it together. They weren't imagining. Yeah, because yeah. that was what that was my first introduction. That's what I saw and, and straight away. And I, I met, when I met, when I emailed you, I mentioned it in it. You said it in that video, and I've got it written down here. Um, it's not about running long distances. It's about achieving things you didn't think you could do. To yeah. me, that's like the ultimate. I think that's unbelievable. And, and that's basically what we, our podcast has been about, I think, really. Absolutely, hasn't it? yeah. It's not about necessarily um, the, the sort of the, the, the ethos of what, our, what ours is about. It's not, hey, look, I've done a thing, shiny metal. It's the process of yeah. getting to that point. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and was that something that you felt like you needed? Because um, you, you're open, very open about the reasons why you started running. Yeah, I needed something to clear my head, you know, starting back about 10 years ago. And then uh, yeah. my early 30s, I was working hard, partying hard, 
sort of had a bit of money in my pocket and sort of yeah just going out a lot and but still not really feeling healthy mm. at all yeah, yeah. never feeling healthy at all so i just started doing a little bit of, of running at the time i had a bit of a breakdown um from uh, work related stresses and uh, a bit of post traumatic from uh, worked in conflict zones yeah, for quite yeah. some time so you know, and my sister has uh, been running quite a bit, and she'd had a bad back, and I'd had a bad back. And my mum was my mum started running after when she retired. So they said, "Oh, you know, why don't you sign up for the London Marathon?" So that was around that time, around oh, wow. 2009, just as Burnley got back in the Premier League. So I was at a really low point in my life. Uh, I was in in Indonesia. Um, I'd I was working freelance then, so I thought and Burnley got in uh, through the playoffs, mm. and I was finishing a project off that evening so I'm stuck in Aceh where the tsunami was sort of years ago right yeah so I stuck out there and I was in this little in my friend's sort of house about three o'clock in the morning writing this report off and then watching Burnley on the internet you know sort of <laughs> BBC sort of text messages coming in because I couldn't really get any any stream or anything like yeah. that to watch the game then my mates were like why aren't you coming to, for the you know for the playoff yeah. final I said tell you what <laughs> if we win I'm coming home for the season <laughs> so I came home for the season and Wicked. um I missed one game that season. That was to run the London Marathon. Oh, cool! Um, so who were they playing? Did they were playing did Liverpool? In, in, they were playing Liverpool at home that, that day. So I was running in London in right. the morning. I would have had to beat the world record and get an helicopter <laughs> to get the game. So I missed the game. Yeah. <laughs> did they win? Away. Got beat four 0 oh, I think. Oh, <laughs> good one to swerve, then, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So no, it, that was that was pretty much my start of running, really, and yeah. uh, just enjoyed the process. I enjoyed the training. Enjoyed. Mm time with nature yeah. and being at being out but just back to that comment you know it was from a sort of advocacy point of view it's not for me to say oh you've got to go out and run you know start running yeah. find what you like find what you love find yeah. what makes you go ooh, and yeah, do yeah. it you know and and achieve it you know and um so it's i mean it can be simple things just day to day getting you getting your sort of to-do list you know, going through that's hard work. Completely. Isn't it? But if you can get your mindset into completing whatever tasks you've got in front of you, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, yeah, you can you can you can move mountains. I think. Absolutely. One hundred percent. I love that. I love all of that. That's so inspiring. Yeah. That's a beautiful sentiment. And barely started the the chat. That's, that's <laughs> what, what a lovely <laughs> thing. Yeah. He's there, done this before. Yeah. This yeah. That's what Bill <laughs> me just be on a on a Thursday <laughs> afternoon, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> Well, well, there we go. Thanks for uh, for joining us on episode four. <laughs> that was episode four. <laughs> behind, and that's that's the interview done. <laughs> <laughs> what a guy, though. What a start to an interview. Oh man, absolutely. The, I keep when I was telling people we were going down to interview him, I kept coming back to that quote. It's not about running long distances. It's about achieving things you didn't think you could do. Yeah, brilliant. For me, that's the ultimate um, quote. Yeah, completely. Well, I was just going to say it's not about running. It's not about, like he said ticking off things on your list. Yeah. Aiming for something can change your life and, and make you feel so much better. And we've sort of referred back to that, I think, every time we've got our heads together and had a chat and mm. spoke on the podcast and in real life as well. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's not about um, setting yourself ginormous tasks at all. It's just uh, get out of bed, tick, achieve it. Um, if you're struggling uh, mental health-wise, uh, physical health-wise, do what you can do and maybe that little bit more just so that you progress every time. Yeah. And yeah. what, uh, to get that in the first like three minutes of a chat with a dude, uh, wow! He knows what he's talking about, doesn't he? Does he? Absolutely. He's only been doing it ten years as well. But he's quick, man. He certainly is, and we're going to hear more from him right now. Let's go. But then, where does the <laughs> where does the thought come? Hey, listen, we've got nineteen away games this season. I'm going to run to all of them. Where did that first? thought be uh, be being introduced i think i just got a little bit not, i'm not that bored but i was just signing up for races and doing races i'd started to um i had a bit of another breakdown about two years ago and i, I really thought right I, I need to i'm either just going to survive this or i'm going to thrive and then the world cup for me was I'd, I'd been out of britain for some time so i think seeing hearing all the negativity about brexit and social conditions and things and and not sort of putting that to one side but the World Cup did actually um, give have a good buzz to it, yeah. yeah, and a bit of relief for people. So yeah. when I thought about doing a, you know, I thought about doing a, you know, running to one away game, and I thought oh, maybe that's not enough. And um, 
<laughs> but I, I knew I wanted to combine <laughs> football yeah. with running uh, yeah. to do something for, big for charity. There's a good vibe for yeah, doing yeah. this in the country. This sport is a is something that brings us together, you know, that rather than something that divides us. Uh, banter aside, and I, I love the banter that goes with away days and football. And, yeah. Uh, obviously, but um, yeah, I just thought, right, come on, let's go, let's go for it. And then, then I thought, well, the fixtures are out in a week or two. Yeah. <laughs> and then, then before I knew it, there was, you know, it was the end of July, and to set off. And then the you see it all written down, gone. and then you're like, oh god, I've got to run, do some running now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then did you Southampton the first, the first away? Was games. that the first away game? Yeah. So you're like, whoa, wow. that's like pretty much the furthest one. That's like France, mate. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's different, different country down there. Completely. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. So I was like, then I had a bit of like, ooh, really? Do I really want to do this? Mm. But then I thought, well, if I can do that first, yeah, that's then true. I'm going to learn so much because I had no idea really about logistics, and I just, just winged it really. Yeah. Sort of. Because uh, I guess if the first one had been at Old Trafford, then it's a distance you know quite well-ish. Yeah. And what is it? 30-ish from here? Yeah, it's about it's, yeah, it's about 30 miles. So, which yeah. is just over a marathon. It's ultra still, but it's, yeah, yeah. it's just over a marathon. But I guess, yeah, the baptism of fire straight into South Coast fixture maybe helped you. Yeah, and I, had, I had a bit of time. It did help me logistically because I, I sort of had a bit more time to set off because there wasn't a game prior to, to that game. It was right, the yeah, first yeah. game of the season. So, so I gave myself 11 days. Um and I kind of, through six degrees of separation, found places to stay. Mm. Oh, cool. I had hardly any money at that time at all. Um, so I stayed with friends of friends, and it was summer, it was long. I mean, yeah. it was long days. So I had 12 hours a day, 13 hours a day of daylight. Yeah. So I was like, well, even if I'm struggling, I can I can walk it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that's a lovely thing. Like We, we were talking the, only the other day on, on this podcast about how much the social side and the camaraderie side of running is such a massive part of it. Yeah, yeah. And what you just said there about, you know, just ringing friends of friends of friends of friends of aunties of dogs of friends who you know, yeah. and saying, hey, you got a, a room I can sleep in yeah. <laughs> for that day. What a lovely thing that people open their their house. Yeah, it and, was. And there was rooms. people that didn't know. There was, there was on my first one. There was a couple, a uh, couple of places I stayed that I didn't know the people quite well, so yeah. it was kind of nice and comfortable. Then there was the others that, you, I mean, you're, you're socially obliged to. You know, be social. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you, get yeah, yeah. you know, they've made you dinner. You know, it's like they want to you know just about get your it. head down. Yeah, no, I just want to just, yeah, just get my head down and, and you know, just sort of like <laughs> crash yeah. out. But yeah. you can't do, you know, so you're kind of up up till sort of like nine, ten o'clock mm. talking and explaining. And then, then the next day, you, you know, you don't get as much sleep as what you think. So it became a whole sort of new thing yeah. completely. Uh, but I, I did manage to get through. The yeah. actual running itself, have you been doing that? Purely on your own, or have people been joining in, you know, in certain parts and running with you, or yeah, people joining in a bit more now. On the longer ones, it's a bit more difficult, but I've got, I've met a few people that come along every time. Yeah. Um, got a, a great Burnley fan who lives in Reading, and she comes in and joins me around, sort of uh, Emil Hempstead, North of London, always comes in. She's an ultra runner and joins me for half a day. Brilliant. Uh, and sometimes her husband comes he runs as well. So uh yeah. and the shorter ones, yeah, yeah. Had tw- there were twenty of us ran to Man United. Oh was that? Yeah, <laughs> that it was one brilliant. of my mates fiftieth and it was his well it's the first time he'd ever run more than a marathon. So he he ran almost fifty K on his fiftieth birthday. Another oh, guy was oh. forty nine on his on on match day. So um and I've had a few more that have run the first marathons with me as well. So yeah. a few more mates that have you know, not run more than you know, 20, 21 k before, and they've, they've smashed the first marathon doing oh, so with, with me on this challenge. What a way so, to do it, though! Yeah, yeah. it's completely what a different. Do I don't it. give them a medal or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Well, the medal is 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 taking part in that experience with you, yeah, with your pals, exactly. Yeah, you know, with your Burnley shirts on, yeah, yeah. and doing all that. Oh yeah, man, yeah. that's that's so that's amazing. Though so that's part of the idea, I think, to to try and. Uh, they inspire people to get out and, and, and do a bit more than, than what they think they can, you yeah. know, yeah. just achieve some something different, you know. And uh, yeah, and this, yeah, hopefully we'll get a few more. We'll get a few more before the end of oh. Liverpool and Everton coming up, so they're a bit more, a bit more viable for quite a few people. Yeah. So yeah, hopefully we'll have, we'll have a nice gang on the last one run away to Everton. Amazing. When's that? Early May, early May. Yeah, that's the last game Fancy? of the season. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've got, two more. Do it. You got yeah. two more. We'll do it. We'll Brilliant. come. Yeah, I'm yeah. not wearing a fucking Burnley shirt, though. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> Who'd you support? I support Leeds, mate. Yeah, you oh, oh, well, maybe next season, eh? Maybe yeah, next yeah. season you'll yeah, run yeah, to Leeds, yeah. yeah. Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, we'll watch Burnley beat us 4 0, and I'll cry and cry and cry. You've got to get there yet, mate. <laughs> I know. It's, it's a long way. It's a long way. It's not easy getting out of the championship. It's not. No, we've been in it for 15 years. 
Is, it, is that, is that yeah. yeah. Last time yeah. we were in the Premier League, I was 14. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm not anymore. Yeah, <laughs> but you can't take it for granted. I mean, it's, there's a lot of young Burnley fans now that are sort of like don't remember the bad days. Yeah, yeah. they've been treated, you know, and the, the sort of expectations have lifted all mm. of a sudden. And they, you know, the same things either online or on the games. And you just like you yeah. just don't remember where you've come the struggle. from. Yeah, you know? yeah. And, it, and it is a real struggle, you know. And, uh, and that's one of those things again. You appreciate it more when you get there. Comp- yeah. You know? we, we we had a sentence on this very podcast uh, last episode of the episode before, which was some people nowadays, Instagram culture, that sort of thing, they, they see the top of the mountain, but they don't see how you get up to it. Yeah. And I think by running, what we get from it, and from the sounds of it, what you get from it as well, is the appreciation of the journey as yeah. much as just the, hey, listen, I've done a thing. Yeah. You want to get better as well. It's believing in that process, you know, and focusing on that process, not focusing on the goal, because the, the goal will just come, but just enjoying that, that day-to-day sort of whatever you're doing, you know, and enjoying sleeping more. You know, I've, I've, one of my main things now is sort of upping my sleep. I was on about four to five hours average, and now I'm sort of like up to seven or eight hours average. Oh, amazing. And it's, I mean, it just... I mean, that's when you rejuvenate your body. Yeah. So yeah. when it all recovers, if you're not sleeping enough. So those sort of things, you know, that's, having that as a, a goal to tick, you know, making sure you do get seven or eight hours of sleep, sleep a night is uh, is massive. Oh, huge. Gone thing. off on a bit of a tangent there. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's all right. I was I was sold with the eight yeah. hours of sleep. I love yeah. all of that because it's <laughs> funny when you, when you tell when you tell people you've run a marathon or you've run whatever distance. It can be a ten k. It can be anything. And the, the sort of majority of people's reaction is, oh, I can't run me, I can't do that. And, and I think I say to them, have you, have you done some running? Have you gone out and tried? And like, no, no. And you're like, well, you've got to, like you say, you've got to apply yourself to something, haven't yeah. you? It doesn't, I'm not, we're not preaching everyone to go out and do a run. Not at all. But you've got to give yourself something to sort of aim for, aren't you? And mm. Yeah. And that first bit's harder as well, though. That first bit, because that, that's yeah. when you get your aches and pains, because you, yeah. you've not done it before, and you, you are going to feel it, you yeah. know, in your cardio and, and physical yeah. sides, you know. So people soon knock it off, because they're like, oh, I can't do this, I can't do this. But once you get in that, believe in the process, get through that first few weeks, and you're like, hey, you know, I can, I can now. Yeah. Here we yeah. go. <laughs> it, you know, it feels all right, you know. And then you then you buy your first pair of shoes and you wait, aren't you? Yeah, <laughs> that's it. I remember the first pair of running shoes, proper running shoes I had. Um, Let me guess, did you get them cheap? Yeah, I did. I got Every them episode, he <laughs> gets something on the cheap. <laughs> yeah. like. Well, they were good. They, I think they were just discounted. But I put them no on. No laces. And I was. <laughs> 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 I put them on and I did. I did wasn't very far, maybe a 10K, something like that. But I felt like I was flying. Honestly, felt like I was 12 feet tall and flying. Yeah, yeah, it's a massive difference, isn't oh. it? Well, not only that, I was strong as well at that yeah. point. Because I'd, I'd kick I'd off, get rid of your Adidas Sambo and sort of yeah. like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, I was in flip flops, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I threw yeah, yeah. them in the river. <laughs> I love this guy, Dino. Absolutely, same. When we were talking to him, and after listening to it back a few times, I always worry that sometimes this podcast and, and, and chats like this are always going to be a bit preachy and a bit running heavy. Yeah, agreed. But, yeah. but, but Scott nails it because it's not, when, it's not about running. Mm. He, he said in that little section there, it's about inspiring people to get out and do a bit more than they think they can and achieve something different. Yeah. To me, that it doesn't have to be running. It can be anything, and you'll notice the change in your life. And this guy is like, is the prime example of what that can do to a human being and Absolutely. mental state and physical and yeah, because uh, it, it, I mean, he said as well in there that he, he'd had another breakdown. He doesn't go into what the breakdown entailed, um, but any breakdown isn't it's not all, it's not roses, is it? Mm. But he said that he made a conscious decision whether to just survive it or thrive. On yeah, it. and what an inspiring thought that that is hey listen this has happened to me this is this is something that i'm gonna have to deal with i can either just go through the motions and get through it or i can thrive and turn it into something positive it's incredible isn't it i've been fortunate enough to never sort of have those moments or have that 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 happen to me and to hear somebody who's been through it and have that outlook to me is is inspiring and that 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 makes me just want to do everything i can yeah to improve everything (laughs) (laughs) I i don't know what i'm trying to I know what Stay, you're but to say. I just think that his outlook to me is is how we should all be feeling. Yeah, and it, it it inspired me yesterday. I did a long run yesterday. I did 14 miles. Um, but Scott was part of this uh, this runaway thing. Was running from Burnley to Newcastle. Yeah, I seen that on his Twitter. Um, and I got I got to about 11 miles, and I was flagging. I was dead. And I thought, well, he's running to Newcastle. I can't give up. Yeah, you know, it, it, I, I can't take the shortcut here. I can't, you know, wag it off. I've got to carry on. Um, he has a mantra which is legs, hearts, and minds. 
which we don't cover in the uh, in the interview, but he puts about it on his social media, legs, hearts and minds. And he said yesterday his legs had gone on the way up to Newcastle. So it was all about hearts and minds. Yeah. And I was like, that's that's brilliant. It so is, isn't it? I was I, chanting it on the way around, hearts it, and minds. Hearts and minds. <laughs> Going through North Manchester must look weird. It's made me smile sat here in my, live, in my living room in my pyjamas, just yeah. that, that mantra. Yeah. That is, what a guy. Uh, we're going to hear more from him in a second, um, but until then, uh, we just have a little quick word from our sponsors. Tits trips, new from JLS. Do you chafe as you're running for a bus? Do you chafe when you're making love in a train station? Have you tried everything? Vaseline, omega-3 fish oils, the sperm of a righteous man, and nothing's worked? Then why not try Tits Trips? A new revolutionary product from JLS to stop your tits chafing. And why not try new dick strips for men? Not suitable for human consumption. May contain asbestos. All products made in North Korea. My wife's not let me see my daughter for nearly four years. Child's bike for sale, £100 on nearest offer. Terms and conditions apply. So we wanted to mention, obviously, you are running, you're doing all of this for your charity, for the charity. I noticed on your website, did you start off with a target of £10,000, was it? Yeah, that was the initial target, and uh, luckily we've gone past that, so Smashed we've raised it. the yeah. bar to 25 now. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Uh, so, yeah, we've got five more runs, and we'll probably keep it open for a bit, sort of post-season. Sure. Uh, but, yeah, it's uh, it's been amazing, the response, and um, I haven't really... Uh, looked at it recently, but at some stage you had a list of all the uh, people from different who support supporters of different clubs. Oh, cool. you know, and you had like Brilliant. QPR in there and Ipswich, so it weren't just Premier League clubs, there were yeah. fans from all around the country, Fleetwood fans, and you know, and sort of even had a few Blackburn fans have done wow, it, you know. Right. So, uh, <laughs> you, know, you know, you know, you've got you've you know, you've, yeah, <laughs> you're doing all right, <laughs> you've got Blackburn fans donating. You didn't but, mention uh, any Yorkshire clubs there though. Those no, no, I don't think they've got the internet. Over there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Brilliant. Uh, no, no, I'd, I'd, welcome, I'd welcome some donations from oh, these mate, fans. Don't worry, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get that yeah, sorted. Yeah. The, where's the money going towards? Just tell us about that. What's like the money you're raising? Who's that helping out? Yeah, the concept really is to spread love across uh, the football community. So I'm raising money for all of the Premier League's uh, charitable foundations. So there's 20. Uh, 50% of it is going to BFC in the community, Burnley Football Club in the community, and we're going to dis distribute it amongst uh, small projects within Burnley or the Burnley, Burnley catchment area. Uh, and then the other 19, 50% uh, will go to the other 19 clubs. Great. So we'll have a, uh, an open sort of process at the end uh, where they can send us a, an application, uh, just you know, one page or two page uh, from, say, you know, Everton in the community or Man United in the community. And uh, so they all have their own, own specific projects. Yeah. Uh, and I've visited quite a few of those as well. I've, mm. I've been out to quite a few programs um, down at Southampton on the first after the first run, um, and at Watford. And uh, so, and I've met most of the the staff uh, when I get there. I meet the staff and have a good chat Amazing. about the programs they're doing. And Great. Uh, so I've got a, a good idea. And so hopefully afterwards I can go out and spend a bit of time uh, on some of the projects. See where season, it's going. See where it's going once, yeah, once it's been distributed out because not, not only now are you achieving these things you're um, pushing yourself like you, you you've talked about you're going to have a lasting legacy in 20 communities around the country you've got to just got to believe in the power of sport you know and I think oh. it's you know it's uh, um, and that's what I wanted to do and rather than just give it to just just Burnley I think mm. it's uh, part of the ethos of the club a lot as well as you know just sort of open it up to um Open the arms up to other clubs across the country, and uh, and I mean, you've seen it this year. There's been quite a few tragic accidents this year with uh, yeah. Leicester and recently at Cardiff, and uh, and you see how the football community comes together. You yeah. know, it's um, so it's it's quite it's quite touching to see that. So I, w I wanted to sort of have the same the same sort of impact uh, with uh, with the monies that we raise. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. How many how many have you got left then? How many games are there? Because I'm not a football fan, mate, so I don't understand. It's the it's a round ball. <laughs> eleven <laughs> side. Eleven dudes. Eleven dudes. Yeah. Great. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> how many away games are left? So how well, there's nineteen in total. I've done fifteen already. Fourteen already. Right. But five more to go. So uh, this weekend I set off to Newcastle so for Tuesday night game. Yeah. So I'll set off on Sunday. Um, running to Newcastle. It's 
up the Pennine Way, so it's going to be a big trail run this this uh, yeah this three days of trip. Well, two days of largely trail running up the Pennine Way, and then once I get a kind of parallel to Newcastle, turn right, and then hit a B road or an A road <laughs> into Newcastle, or something like that. Nice. Um, and how are you feeling? Like, because you've done 14, how how are you feel? Are you knackered? Are you ready for the end? Or are you like loving it? Are you enjoying it? In early in mid January, I felt really shattered, mm. um, and I had a really down point uh, during the run to Watford. Right, and I just really sort of took my head out of the game. You know, I took it for granted that oh, this is another run to London, it'll be fine, and I hadn't really sort of focused on it. Yeah. And we had the run to Man United with twenty people the week after, so I've been thinking a bit more about that. Yeah. Um, and I had a really couple of bad days, and I really wasn't didn't want to be there yeah um, and I usually do feel mentally tired afterwards because it's, it's an intense six or seven days or yeah, longer yeah. if it was Brighton um, you know you, you, 14 15 hour day you spend a couple of hours on media sort of by the time you finish in the evening and you're preparing your stuff for the next day and uh, so you, you've mentally sort of knackered by the time you finish and obviously physically you, you've taken a, a big hit as well mm. uh, but I think it's that Adaptation, or adaptation, you kind of your body adjusts as it yeah. as it goes along, and uh, and that's what I was hoping would happen. Uh, and luckily, it has happened. <laughs> it's oh, <worked> so <laughs> it has. My body's like, all oh, right, we're doing this again now. Imagine your body just going, oh, we're running another 260 miles this week. Madness, isn't it? Just accepting it. Yeah, and he says it so casually as well. Yeah, like it was just expected. Also, I love the fact that he's shelling leads. Not, it's <sighs> not. <laughs> he took the bat on off me <laughs> this week. I've been getting a lot of stick on Twitter for <laughs> of Yorkshire folk. Did you two have a chat before and go, we're going to get him? <laughs> no, it's just obviously a nationwide hatred of Leeds come. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we nearly got through an episode without you shelling me. But I said, I'm all right. I've got broad shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> Scott says as well, he, he nails the sentiment of um, sports, something that brings us together yeah. Yeah, yeah. rather than divides us. And mm. you've got to believe in the power of sport. For him to do all of this um, for charity and all of that money, I love that 50% of it's going to Burnley, obviously his, his home football mm -hmm. club, and the rest of it is given out to all the other football clubs. I think that's a, a, a great s sign of what a, a lovely human being he is. Yeah, and that he wants to, to spread the love and make sure that this thing that he's doing, which is very nationwide, ends up nationwide. Yeah. You know? I only I know the Manchester United Foundation. I've worked with them a bit, and I know the work that they do yeah. is incredible work. So for them to get a share in it as well, and yeah. I, I imagine all the other clubs, you know, they're doing decent work as well. For them to get a piece of the pie and and some of the dollar off the back of his incredible achievements, as I say, it just goes to show he's a very um, he's a very nice human being. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So if you want to look into that a bit more, uh, it's justgiving.com forward slash the Runaway Challenge. Uh, me and Gary are just throwing a few shekels in there just uh, to say thank you and also what an incredible achievement. Uh, and on across social media, he's at Secot, which is at S-E-K-O-T-T. -T. Um, and yeah, he'll keep you on uh, up to date with what he's, what's going on with all that sort of stuff, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll put all that in the description as well. Just yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Um, and so to conclude, um, Gary and uh, Scott started to bond over their uh, love of the London Marathon. <laughs> London is, is amazing. It was the first one I did. And some part of me doesn't want everyone to do it again because it was such a good day. Yeah. And I don't want, want that to be damaged, that memory, because yeah. it was just fantastic. It was, did you have yeah. the same so, experience? Yeah, yeah I've, just... I've done it once and it was brilliant. So I, I, like you, I wouldn't did want you have to. Your do... name on you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everyone <laughs> giving you all the love. It was awesome. Oh, I've been in a boy band now. It's <laughs> yeah. like, mad. It's mad. And, it's just, and then it's. Uh, Jazz DJs and it's like drum and bass Sweet. and people yeah. set all these different things up and it's jelly babies as many as you want you know <laughs> like it's just mad you know for the first time yeah. it's just the best thing you could ever D the best one you could ever wish Dean for. said it a few times but the the best of humanity is at things like that oh. events like that just yeah, yeah. the crowd giving out sweets and giving yeah. out the time for a yeah. bloke DJ the whole yeah. time yeah, yeah. you know it's just oh, it's it does get you around and it does yeah, yeah. make you feel good about the world again, yeah, doesn't yeah, it? For at, sure, yeah. At that Chicago marathon, we, before we came onto the mics, um, Scott had said that he'd run the Chicago marathon the same year me and Gary had run it. Yeah, yeah. we were on, on the course together, weren't yeah. we? Yeah, we were out there, <laughs> brothers in arms. Um, but there was a part of that where my head had absolutely gone and there was this little kid, I can't remember what area it was, but she, bless her, she ran alongside me 
feeding me jelly beans, <laughs> jelly babies, just out of the goodness of heart, just sprinting like, here you are, here you are. Mate, I just I got I got an extra two miles out of that yeah. exchange. Yeah, yeah. Just do, by don't, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. completely. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank brilliant. Thank you so much um, for speaking to us, Scott. Um, you've become a hero of ours in the last couple of weeks just through hearing about what you're doing and especially having heard you speak today. Yeah. Well, you definitely be here as a man if you come and join me for Everton. We'll be there, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah solve. That's Absolutely. Great. I'm great. not saying how long we'll do it for. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. that'll be the week after. We're doing Madrid Marathon, so that'll be the week after that. So oh, we will it? Okay. Yeah, so yeah. we'll be no, fit. No. It just yeah, depends yeah. how many beers we have in Madrid afterwards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but with we all might, our... We might be doing it in speedos, by the way. Oh, really? <laughs> You'll have to get special dispensation from the police for Gary. Yeah, for that. and a rake of factor 50 there's, there's as well. A mad Everton fan called Speedo Dave, and he goes to all the away games <laughs> just in Speedos. So I've been in contact with him, so <laughs> it might be. It might, yeah. I mean, you Speedo a Dave. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I'll put my, uh, I'll put my, <laughs> I'll put my uh, life on the line here. If Leeds United get promoted this year, I will buy some Leeds United Speedos and I will run with you, <laughs> the white Scott. Ones, oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> it's even worse, isn't it? Lily White Speedos. Oh, oh God. Yeah, Skid marks. Ones, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So, with all our guests, Scott, before we let you go, um, we have three questions. Quick fire round, as it were. Yeah, yeah. So, the first one is If you could have one thing, Scott, waiting for you at the finish line of any event, what would it be? It can be a person, it can be a bit of food, anything at all. Cheese and ham sandwich with salt and vinegar crisps on it. Amazing. <laughs> nice. This guy's my best mate from that answer. <laughs> yeah. That's my pat lunch. And a beer, obviously, as well. I think you said one thing, but I think oh. We can squeeze a beer. Can, yeah, 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 that's a pat lunch. Cheese yeah, and ham sandwich, salt and vinegar crisps, beer. Yeah. Oh, what a guy. Lovely. Um, the, the second one. Um, there's only one song on your running playlist. What is it? Recently, it's Wasted Kusabian. Nice. Yeah, I, it, I've had that on loop for hours. Brilliant, amazing. Point, yeah. um, and finally, um, you're on a long run. Uh, there's yourself there and two other people. They can be anyone from history. Who are those two people? Uh, they've got to be runners, haven't they? Um, <laughs> What's to keep up with you? Brian Jacks. Okay. Do you remember Brian Jacks? I have Jacks? no idea who that person no. is. Brian Jacks was British judo champion. And then they used to have this program called Superstars in the 80s. Right. And they had all these different sportsmen. So they'd have a cyclist, a footballer, and they had to do multiple sports. Right. And uh, Brian Jacks always won it. Absolutely <laughs> brilliant. Yeah, yeah. The machine. Blonde curly hair. He's an absolute machine on the pull-ups and dips and all that sort of stuff. Brian Jacks, uh, massive hero of mine. Uh, Jess Ennis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my heart dropped when she got married. Oh, dear. <laughs> It'll never last, Scott. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Scott Cunliffe, thank you so very much. Thank you, man. That's been great. My pleasure. Thanks for having me on. And uh, we'll see you uh, scantily clad in uh, Merseyside. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sounds bad, that, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. I, I came away from chatting with Scott feeling really positive. Yeah, and I did. I, I definitely, he definitely brought me up. What, mm. what a guy. What well, an what inspiration. Although I don't know if I will be so positive about him when I'm in uh, white speedos running through the uh, <laughs> the Merseyside Delta. Yeah, thanks for signing us up for that, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> Throwing us right under the bus. Oh, that would be great. All the glory, me and you turning up to his last one with our arms up and he's done a 3,000 miles and we do the last six. <laughs> yeah. We did it! We did it! You say this, but you've never seen me in speedos, mate. Oh, God. Do you know, do you know in, uh, is it Fantastic Four and they've got the human torch? Yeah. That's what I look like with no clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> Picture that. In oh, I've got it, yeah. In speedos. <laughs> yeah. Sweating and swearing. Oh, Jesus. You might, would you get arrested? I don't think they'd want to touch me to arrest me. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they just let you run into the Mersey. <laughs> He'll put himself out, lads. He'll be all right. <laughs> but no, it, it, with full sincerity, I mean, what a guy. T t as well, to, uh, that's obviously the first guest on Behind the Medal. We asked him those three questions at the end. And I don't think we'll get a better answer and a more sincere and lovely answer than what is waiting for you on the finish line. And he comes out with what I'm now calling the Northern Lunchbox, <laughs> which is <laughs> a cheese and ham sandwich, salt and vinegar... Salt and vinegar crisps and a beer. Yeah. 
I mean, what could be more perfect? It was like a reflex answer as well. It was so quick. Yeah. <laughs> no messing about. He had the answer locked and loaded, ready to fire. Oh, mate, he's had 3,000 <laughs> miles to think about that this yeah. year. Do you know what I mean? It's a lot of miles thinking, what, what, what do I need here? What do I need? It's a good choice. It's a fabulous choice. To be fair, I had that at primary school, minus the beer, every day of my... Uh... <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's Scott. We're, I mean, we're going to be catching up with other people um, uh, around the, the running game or around the mental health game um, across the uh, across the episodes. Um, and so that's kind of it for this one. Uh, there's no Ginger Wisdom. That'll be back next week. Uh, there's no quiz. That'll be back next week. Um, there's no stories of Gary Soiling himself, although maybe the seed has been planted for some sort of splattering <laughs> speedos. <laughs> It'll make for a, a good one anyway, I think. Yeah, yeah. A yeah. marathon in speedos. Oh, wow. Are we doing the full one then? I don't know, are we? Well, it sounds like you just signed us up, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not committing to anything on air in a public space. <laughs> but that's the 4th of May. Um, so we've got plenty of time. It's the week after Madrid. We might do a full one with him. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see how we feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's been a sincere one and normal service will be resumed next time. It certainly will. Um, but um, to take us into the outro, we're just going to hear again from another of our sponsors. Um, but for now, it's uh, goodbye from me. And goodbye from me. Catch you next time. Coming up this half term on the Nartoon Network is Poppy Pig. Hi, I'm Poppy Pig. And this week, I'm learning how to cook. Poppy has gone round to her uncle's friend's house, Colin the Chicken, to learn how to cook breakfast. Hi, Colin. I'm learning how to be self-sufficient so my alcoholic mother can sleep off a large one. Can you teach me how to cook breakfast? Right. Well, you'll need to find a bowl first. There's a pile in the sink there. Find the cleanest one, though, mine, not one covered in shite. Yeah, found one. Right, well, you've got to fire some sugar puffs in it and splash the milk around there, you fucking go. Breakfast. I don't have any spoons, mine, so you'll have to shovel it in with your trotters. That's great. Thanks, Colin. You're very welcome, young lady. Now get out of my house, you stinky little bastard, before I make you into bacon. Have a nice day. Bye. Fuck off. Poppy Pig on the Nartoon Catwork. <laughs>